Hello everyone, this is the most intelligent and magnificent bird, Buckbeak, speaking to you today. And in today's video, I'm just going to simply be doing some raids. And before we get started, I hope all of you are doing good and staying safe out there. I'm doing alright, and I'm staying safe for the most part. It has really gotten really cold today. The wind's been blowing, and I wonder how cold it is for everybody else, wherever you are. Right now, it's probably in the low 40s to high 30s, but to be fair, it is um, after 10 p.m. for me, but as you guys can see, I have my avatar set to baby ghost. I just, I love the avatar. I despise the changes to the current battle pass, but pretty freaking cool, pretty freaking adorable avatar. He's just so cute, absolutely. I'm proud to have that avatar, and I don't think we should waste any more time. I think we should go ahead and jump into raiding with me, Buckbeak, shall we? All right. Hmm. There we go. Peacekeeper should be done the next turn coming up. There we go. Man, I I just love Duck. Whoever thought his character in the game would be so good. But he's uh he's pretty good, definitely. More than a couple of uh, days ago on my YouTube community tab, I created a poll and I wanted to know your guys' opinion on you know, a telltale team that I should run, you know, all of them involved pretty much, you know, Clem, Duck, Kenny, and Lily, along with either Molly or Lee, and most of you voted the telltale team with Lee. You guys are thinking that what I was thinking, but I just wanted to put a poll and see which one y'all would vote for. And the m more more of you voted for the Telltale team with uh, Lee on it. You you guys probably have the same thought process behind that team uh, to get the adrenaline rushes off a a turn quicker. That's what I was thinking too. But I think both Telltale teams could work honestly. And. You guys are probably wondering where that team is. I need to level them up, and I need to put mods on them. I think I'm going to go with the Telltale team with Lee instead of Molly. And if any of you guys have any good mod suggestions for those tunes, you know, just feel free to let me know down in the comments if you would like to. Oh, no. 
the 2021 video game awards are coming up um they're coming up pretty shortly i don't know the exact date after finding out what's been nominated for most of the awards i honestly just don't i don't care who wins I mean, in my opinion, the nominees for Game of the Year are a joke. I mean, honestly, okay, before I say what I'm going to say about the Game Awards, you know, this goes for the Music Awards and Movie Awards and, you know, it goes for all of these award shows. Sometimes when there's a certain movie or game or whatever I want to win, and they actually win a certain award. So I'm just saying that now. At the end of the at the end of the day, all of these award shows really don't matter. They don't. Like, what do they prove? Because I can tell you these award shows are not legit whatsoever. They're not. They're hand picked by I don't know who they're handpicked by I don't know if it's a group of people that handpick them or if it's one person or whatever but the video game awards for example the quote unquote fans can vote for what they want to see win honestly that the fan voting it honestly doesn't matter Maybe a small percentage of that voting actually counts, but honestly, whoever's in charge of picking who wants to win what, if that person or group of people, whatever they want to win, that, that's what's going to win at the end of the day. So, like, like for example... Back in 2020, clearly the best game of that year was Ghost of Tsushima, but another game, which I'm not going to mention, I've mentioned it before, that certain game won over Ghost of Tsushima, and that was total BS. That was total bullcrap, in my opinion. And that's when I was like, yeah, I'm really, you know, I'm super convinced that, yeah, these award shows are all rigged up and picked ahead of time. For the game of the year, I think, I don't remember every single category. I mean, every single nominee, I should say. That, uh, that cat game, um, I think it's called Stray. I think that's a nominee. Never played it, but I didn't really understand the hype of it. Other than, I guess the cat is pretty cute, but other than that, that's being nominated for Game of the Year over something like Dying Light 2 or The Quarry? Like, seriously? Okay. You know, whatever. Then you got the, um, God, the new God of War, Ragnarok. Also a nominee for Game of the Year. Haven't played that one. But maybe if I played it, I might be interested. And then you have the um, Ellen Ring. Or, or whatever the hell that Elden Elderly Ring. Or whatever it's called from From Software. Of course that's nominated. Of course it has to be. Honestly, I don't really care who wins, but if I had to pick between God of War and Ellen Ring for Game of the Year, my pick is going to go to God of War. I would just love to see something other than Ellen Ring or whatever. Not, I would like to see something other than that from Software Game to win Game of the Year. Just to see... But who do I think is going to win? Not that it is really going to matter at the end of the day. I think the Ellen Ring game is going to win, honestly. I know it's called Elden Ring, but... Yeah, I, I honestly think Elden Ring is probably going to win Game of the Year, unfortunately. But 
if there was to be an upset winner, I'd I'd give it to God of War Ragnarok, honestly, even though I haven't played any of the my personal picks for game of the year, it's only going to be down to two games for me, and neither one of them are nominated. It's going to be between The Quarry and Dying Light 2. That's the only two games that I've played that came out this year. I think that Horizon Forbidden West is also a nominee. Like, I don't... I don't understand... I haven't played Horizon Forbidden West. I played the first one. But the thing about that is... I don't remember... Like, as far as the actual story for Horizon Zero Dawn... I don't remember the story. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but... For me, Game of the Year goes to The Quarry or Dying Light 2. But for the actual awards, who do I think is probably going to win it? Elden, Ellen Ring. Who, who would I like to see win it? God of War, Ragnarok. Just that way From Software gets an L, honestly. Because I, I just, I don't like From Software. Nah. Not at all. I mean, that's just... Hey, if you like the From Software games, you know, more power to you. But I just personally will never play another From Software game. <laughs> never again. I know I don't like those games. But yeah, Game of the Year for me is between my personal Game of the Year between me, I mean for me, is between The Quarry and Dying Light 2. Those are the two games this year I've had the most enjoyment with. So, that one's a hard one because I really like both of them. I'm curious, you know, even though the Game Awards do not matter at the end of the day, what's your personal pick for Game of the Year? And who do you think is going to win? If you would like to let me know, you can down in the comments. In, uh, I think it was 2018, that year, um, 2018 in gaming was probably one of the best years in gaming just in general. 2021, I mean 2022, excuse me, 2022 is just, um, was just a lacking year in gaming, honestly. But talking about 2018 that year in my personal opinion Red Dead Redemption 2 should have won game of the year that year but it went to um, I think it went to God of War 2018 and I just I've never played any of the God of War games I don't know maybe if I sat down and gave them a try I might change my mind about them but I think God of War is, like, seriously overhyped. But, like I said, for this Game of the Year awards, I would like to see uh, God of War Ragnarok win over Ellen Elden Ring just to give From Software an L. But at the end of it all, I just, I really don't care, honestly. I don't care that much. And uh, real quick, 
before we uh, before I end things, I just want to say I'm very much enjoying Dying Light 2. I'm almost at the end of it. And let's just say the main villain of Dying Light 2, he's shoo, he's very very difficult. Very badass as well. And uh, let's just say, I mean, he's a human, but he, um, it took me, I want to say, at least 15 to 20 tries before I actually was able to finally beat him. And I didn't actually technically beat him, I just got him down to, um, half his health. Because, like I said, I'm not at the very end, but I'm pretty close to the end it was, you know, the goal of getting his um, health bar to half halfway down just to progress the story. And I can just imagine when I face him again, I can imagine how hard that's going to be. Because, I mean, you know, the main villain, he is a human, but he's got um, super abilities that make it the hardest in it the hardest you know those super abilities make him the hardest enemy I have fought thus far and yeah I don't think I have much else left to say so that's gonna do it for this one I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by and for your continued support or if you're new Welcome in for the first time. All of you are very awesome, and I thank you again. And don't forget to hit the bell and switch on all notifications so you know the second I upload to YouTube. I am Buckbeak, and I'm going to go fly away back to my nest. Until next time, bye guys.